Hey there gamers, I'm Probably Senpai, and welcome to another episode of our weekly Dream Snap series. And as usual, we have some very interesting stuff to discuss today. It should come as no surprise that the biggest topic this week concerns two very interesting posts from the Dreamlight Valley team, revealing a new building coming to the valley and dropping some very significant hints. In addition to these interesting teasers, we will also be taking a look at my Dream Snap results, as well as my submission for the Summer Chill Challenge. We'll take our first look at this week's brand new Dream Snap Challenge, and finally we will review the Premium Shop lineup and take a look at this week's exciting new items. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that I'm a small full-time content creator, so every like on these videos can make a big difference for me. Also, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things Dreamlight Valley. If you would like to keep up with more of my content and ask me questions in real time, consider joining our Twitch community, where I mostly go live with Disney Dreamlight Valley Monday through Friday. You can find the link to my Twitch channel in the video description down below. Though with that said, it is important for me to mention that I will not be streaming from April 4th to April 9th as I will be taking time away from the stream to work on offline content and file my taxes. But I really do hope I get to meet you on April 10th when I return to Twitch. And with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, hello everyone. So as usual, we'll start with the dream snaps. And like I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna be taking a look at my results from the chill summer submission. Now for this particular challenge, if you remember when it came around, I wasn't too awful excited about it, but when I did start working on it, I really, really loved the outfit and look that I put together. That said, I did kind of put minimal effort into this one. I almost always design a scene from scratch just for the challenge. I didn't do that this time. I made the outfit and I took a photo here in an area that already existed in my valley. So, you know, this was a very minimal effort submission. It could still get 4,000 moonstones, but I'm not banking on that. I think 1,500 or 2,500 might be more likely for this one, as I really do feel like the amount of effort I put in directly influences performance. And also as mentioned in the intro, we have some very exciting topics to discuss today. So I'm gonna speed through the dream snap portion of today's video. With that said, let's take a look at how we did. I'll share the submission and then we'll move on to these exciting teasers from the Dreamlight Valley team. And here are the results from Chill Summer. We got a 61.91, the rank was 12,609, and I did in fact get 2,500 Moonstones. Overall, this is pretty good for the amount of effort that went in. I usually put a lot of time into my Dream Snaps. All in all, I think I only spent about 25 to 30 minutes on this Dream Snap, so this is actually a little bit better than I expected. I thought we might see a 1,500, but with that said, I do still think it is a beautiful dream snap and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So let's take a look. Oh, and before we do, it looks like we finally hit rank 10 on Dream Snaps here. So I finally got the Dream Snap trophy. I feel like that took forever. We've done a lot of Dream Snap challenges, so very exciting to get that little trophy. Can't wait to put that somewhere. Maybe I'll make like a little shrine for it or something. Let me know in the comments if you got your Dream Snap trophy this week or if you got yours, you know, last week or the week before. I would love to hear where you guys are on the trophy. All right, moving on. And here it is. This is the chill summer submission that I put forth. Now, now, to me, there's no doubt here that one of the things that held this submission back was that the summer vibes were very, very minimal. The whole setting and background is just very, very winter, and had I been a little bit more creative and incorporated some summer aspects to it, I'm sure it would have done better. Unfortunately, for this particular challenge, I was very limited on time and just decided to take the shot in an existing location. Now, the background may not be very on theme, but I do really really, really love this outfit. And I was really happy with what I put together in terms of mixing winter and summer fashion. Of course, there were a lot of options I could have gone with that would have given me way better tagged and way better high value items. But the more I played with them, the more I just felt like the look wasn't for me. And despite this outfit missing some high value items, I did fall in love with the overall look and I decided to just roll with it. 
Diving into the look here, one of my favorite things about it are the hair and eyes, and I wanted to get a very close up shot so you could really make out the eye color. I wanted to play up a lot of green and white with the look, so we have that long summer skirt, we have this white cardigan, there's the low cut undershirt, the winter scarf, and some gloves. With the avatar in a rather cold environment here, I wanted to pair her with the phoenix or fire raven to provide a bit of warmth or comfort. I think one of my favorite things about the shot would be the angle and just how close we are to the avatar, giving a really good look at the outfit. And again, one of the reasons I wanted to get so close was because I didn't really do anything special with the background. In fact, I didn't touch it at all. This is a rehashed background that I've already used in another challenge and it was for Winter is Here. So yeah, minimal work, minimal effort, but still a surprisingly good reward. 2,500 Moonstones is still in the top 12.5%, which is a little bit better than I was expecting. I was honestly expecting more around 1,500 Moonstones and even thought I could go as low as 1,200 on this one. So 2,500 was a nice surprise. As I stated earlier, we're not gonna spend too much time on it today as we've got much more exciting topics to discuss. I'll close by simply saying I was a very big fan of the outfit I came up with, but the background and setting just didn't really feel on theme at all, and I knew that when I submitted it. Wrapping up Dream Snaps, we are going to be discussing the newest Dream Snap challenge. Now, this is going to be an outfit challenge called Superhero for a Day. The challenge states, bam, pow, bang, show off your super style in this week's Dream Snap outfit challenge. Our mandatory requirements are going to be three strong and three wondrous, while our bonus requirements are going to be bold and masks. Now, I think this looks like a really cool, really fun challenge. I don't think everybody's just going to throw on the Incredibles outfit. I think there's going to be a lot of versatility and a lot of diversity in the types of superheroes people make. So I'm really excited to see what people come up with. Also, I do think it's quite interesting that in the demo photos, they are wearing the Incredible outfits considering that tag usage is so important in outfit challenges, I feel like it's going to be really, really, really difficult to do well if you actually use what they're using in the demo unless they've somehow changed the system. There have been a lot of discussions on this and for any outfit challenge, if you use a costume that occupies most of your outfit spots, it drastically reduces the amount of tags and then it's really hard to get in the bonus tags that end up boosting your score and improving your overall rank. Of course, you could use the Incredibles outfit and then use a back piece as well and then maybe a few other things, but getting the required tags and getting the bonus tags out of that is going to be very hard, which is why I said I think it's likely that we'll see some very cool diversity in our superheroes. I'm actually really excited for this challenge. I can't wait to play around with some of the options and, and make a superhero. To me, this just sounds really cool and really exciting. I just think, you know, them using the Incredibles outfit for the demonstration is a is a bit misleading and could actually end up hurting some players uh, in terms of their score and overall performance. Let me know your thoughts on this week's challenge. And now let's get into the most interesting part of today's video. This Monday on April Fool's Day, Dreamlight Valley posted to their Twitter and across their other social platforms, a very interesting new building. The first tweet they made said, with the arrival of spring, keep cool times going with a fabulous frosty figure. We are excited to announce Olaf's Snow Sculpture Emporium arriving in our next update. Now this was very obviously an April Fool's joke as the arrival of a snow sculpture emporium in the spring just would not make a whole lot of sense. On top of that, there are some very interesting clues on the building here that give hints towards what it actually is, and we'll discuss that in a minute. Before we do, however, we'll have to discuss the tweet Dreamlight Valley made one hour after the April Fool's post. Shortly after trolling the community with the Snow Sculpture Emporium, Dreamlight Valley released another post, and this one read, April Fool's. We've just gotten word that our previous post wasn't accurate. We're not quite sure what this new building is, but stay tuned for more news. 
Now, there are a lot of interesting theories and concepts about what this building can be, but I think we have enough context and enough clues to have a very, very good idea. First of all, the initial April Fool's Day post said that this was coming in the next update, even though at the time they said it was Olaf's snow sculpture. Now, yes, they did end up saying this was an April Fool's joke, but this image shows that they've clearly already modeled and placed this structure on the development side. Also, if you watched my previous video talking about the next three update release dates, I am not surprised at all that we're already seeing teasers for the next update. And that brings us to our two biggest context clues regarding this new building. Now, the biggest and most important clue, in my opinion, is going to be this banner, showing what appears to be a shopping bag with a touch of magic design logo over top. So we know this mysterious building with a touch of magic logo should be arriving in the next update. So let's look at what else is arriving in the next update. And of course, the most well-known feature of the upcoming update would be the addition of Daisy Duck. And if you're unfamiliar with Daisy Duck, you can learn about her on the Disney Fandom Wiki, which is where we're getting the information I'm showing you here. <laughs> and the funniest thing to me is right at the top of the screen here, you see a quote from Daisy that says, I don't like magic anymore, I wanna go shopping. So it's pretty telling that there's this fun little emporium coming in the same update as Daisy. Looking further into the character of Daisy, we can check out her personality traits. And it's not long before you'll reach a segment that states, Daisy's personality was expanded, evolving into a fun, loving, and fashion-forward diva. So we know this building is coming in the next update, and the banner suggests it has to do with shopping and touch of magic. We also know the character approaching in the next update enjoys shopping and is very fashion-forward. But what does this all mean? What exactly can we and should we expect from this new building. What if I told you Gameloft already asked us how we felt about this? A little over two months ago, Disney Dreamlight Valley sent out a very interesting survey to its player base. And the 33rd question on this survey asked, what kind of multiplayer features would you most like to see added to Disney Dreamlight Valley? And one of the options directly ties into what we're discussing today. The ability to trade custom fashion and furniture designs with others. Now you probably see exactly where I'm going with this. I believe this Emporium will be directly tied to Daisy Duck and will allow players to share their touch of magic designs across the Valleyverse. Now this could work in a variety of ways and a similar system was adopted in the popular life sim known as Animal Crossing, where in the Able Sisters, you could share custom designs in your friends' stores or search the internet for other custom designs you may want to use on your island. I believe we will be looking at a very similar system here. Anyway, that's my full breakdown on this exciting new building. Let me know your thoughts on the matter. Do you think that's spot on? I feel like all of the data is there already. I feel like it's pretty clear where this is going, uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as well. Do you think it's for something else? And if it is for Touch of Magic Designs, how do you think it's going to work? And with that out of the way, let's move on to this week's Premium Shop Refresh. Now moving on to the final segment, the Premium Shop Review. And boy, do we have a great Premium Shop this week. The only Star Path item that's ever been in the game that I don't have is in the shop today, and you have no idea how excited that makes me. And there's actually a really sad and funny reason why I don't have this Incredibles outfit. I played the very first Star Path. I have all the other items. I did not spin the tickets on the Incredibles outfit because on the Star Path, they showed the outfit on a female avatar and I had a male avatar. I did not know I could wear the outfit. I thought it was just something I couldn't use because I was just dumb. <laughs> so I never got it. I passed on it only to find out later that 
every outfit can be worn by males and females. So I was kicking myself for not getting this outfit. It is literally the only thing in the game from any star path that I don't have. I already had the mask too. I wonder if I got a pro rate on that. I wonder if it took any money off. Probably not, probably not. Or maybe it did. Was it was it 1200 for you guys? Maybe it was 1200 for me and 1500 for anybody that didn't have it. I don't know. Either way, I'm just happy to finally have every star path item in the game. It's been a long time coming. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. This is great. Now, interestingly enough, that is not the only Star Path item we have. We also have this little collection from Mickey's 100th Anniversary Decoration Set, and I have to say, this is definitely worth getting. I'm not sure what the price is going to be on this, but this rug is beautiful. The Art Deco Mickey poster is awesome, and I really love this projector. It actually has a light animation. When we do the item breakdown, I'll show you exactly what I mean. And I even used this projector a long time ago in my Dapper Delight Dream Snap. I wanted to, like, I know it's a projector, but I used it as an old timey camera because part of the theme description discussed being theatrical and I want it to look like we were recording on set. It's a really fun decor option. Definitely advise picking it up, but we'll take a closer look at it. Aside from that, we have a returning favorite, the Bermuda Merlin, just in time for summer. So I'm gonna pick this up as well. I didn't get it last year because that was a long time ago when DreamSnap had just started and I did not have a big stockpile of Moonstones like I do now. So I'm definitely gonna pick this up. And finally, we have our other premium shop house that everyone's been waiting on the French bakery house so I'm very excited to take a look at the French bakery house check out the detail we're gonna pick up these items and as always we're gonna go through each and every single one of them so you guys can get a very close look at all of these before you make up your mind on any purchases all right first up we have Bermuda Merlin look at him he's young he's hip he's excited to be here we won't spend too much time on Bermuda Merlin because he's been in the game for a while I feel like most of you guys have seen him he's got that really funny like long long hat and also without his robe, you know, you can just see how skinny his little legs are, especially compared to Maui here. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a really fun outfit. It's hilarious. I love the shades. I love the long exaggerated hat, the striped shirt. Uh, it's it's just a really great look for Merlin, great for the summer. So I'm really glad this came back around right when it did. I have no doubt that we'll be seeing more summer dream snap challenges especially when we get into that season if you don't pick up this merlin now you might regret it because he could be very very useful for like vacation themed dream snaps or summer themed, themed dream snaps certainly worth picking up if you have the moonstones now if you're limited on moonstones it might be something worth passing on it really just comes down to your personal preference so here we are with the centennial items as you can see the rug is quite nice i am a big fan of this rug the lights are okay the one downside to the ceiling lights in my opinion is that they don't cast light like some of the other ceiling lights like the chandelier of the deep puts off all of this golden light that reflects off of things these ceiling lights do not put off much they do have a little glow but they don't actually project light. Now the Mickey Deco poster is quite nice, especially if you have the other art deco collections that were part of the premium shop lineup. And lastly, I think the best item from this collection would be the projector. As you can see, you can interact with it when you approach. Just hit that button and boom, you know, you get that nice little light casting off of it. And like I showed in that previous dream snap, it just looks kind of cool. You know, I know cameras like don't necessarily put off like a lot of light like that. Maybe if there's a light attached to it, but I did like using it as like a camera, uh, but they're, they're fun. You know, you can, you can definitely play around with them. I think you can do a lot of creative things with this item. And of course, once you've purchased these from the premium shop, you will also be able to order them from Scrooge. The Art Deco poster is 2,720 star coins. The projector is 3,200. The lights are 2,720. And the Centennial rug is 4,000. Now let's take a look at these incredible costumes. So this comes in two variations. You have the low boot incredible suit that we have on here, and then you have the high boot incredible suit there's not too much to say about this outfit you know it's just exactly what you would expect from the Incredibles pretty much just a mock-up of their signature superhero look complete with the mask which is completely optional as well I mean you could take that off if you wanted to but yeah that's uh that's that's the Incredibles outfit and I for one am very very happy to finally have this in my collection and moving on to the final item on today's list 
this week's premium house, and that's going to be the French Bakery House. My honest opinion is I love this. I'm glad it's 3,000 Moonstones because last week we got Lady Tremaine's Manor, and this was 3,750, and I just felt like it was overpriced for what it is. Whereas if we look at the French Bakery House, you know, it's comparable in size, it's comparable in detail. I think honestly it's a bit cuter. I would love this in like a little shopping district or village area. Area. I love all the greenery growing off of it. I love the croissant up there on the side. I like the little sign out front. Everything about this is so fun and decorating the inside of this also I think will be really cool because you can turn it into your very own little bakery and you can cook like a lot of meals to drop in there as well. I just think there are a lot of fun things we can do with this build. And coming in at 3,000 Moonstones, it was much more reasonably priced than what we had last week. Better yet, the details surrounding surrounding this home is pretty thorough. You know, even at the very top, which you're not really gonna see when you're running around, you have a lot of different colorations on the tiles. It looks like a lot of green has grown into them. Like there's like some moss growing up there. You have the vines going up the side, even some flowers coming off. I love these little metal rails that are kind of guarding the top floor here, like little balconies almost. Overall, it's a really, really cute premium house. If you have the moonstones, I think it is certainly worth picking up. The bakery also looks quite good at nighttime, very well lit. I love the lanterns up there at the top. My only little complaint here is that this main showcase window, we don't have any lighting coming from back there. Even like a soft light would be kind of cool, but I think the reason they did that is because it would just be like a big blank yellow shiny wall in front of this stuff and maybe they didn't want it to feel unnatural, whereas the windows having light kind of works a little bit better, but since this window is so big and so open, maybe it wouldn't have looked right. But I don't know, I would have loved some form of light there, maybe even little light bulbs above the food or something. Still though, it's, it's you know, that's a very small complaint. Overall, I love it, I'm happy with it. I'm not critiquing it too much here because I think it's well detailed, well put together, and it's another great premium house for players that love these premium pickups. And there you have it, my friends. That concludes this week's breakdown for all things Dreamlight Valley. If you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful or entertaining, be sure to hit that like button for me as it helps more people discover the channel. And of course, consider subscribing to keep up to date on all things Dreamlight Valley. As always, thank you so much for your time today and good luck in your Dream Snaps challenges. This week's YouTube video shoutouts redeemed on Twitch go to my longtime friends Mel G and Hope Ann. Thank you both for always being there for me and for being such a big part of what makes this community so special.